This conference will now be recorded. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Ann Ortley's Weekly Weather. This is the weekly weather for July 31st to August 7th, 2022. Our theme this week is Rocket Fast with Challenging Changes. Remo decided to join me. You can see him over there. He's like hanging out because we're having so many changes and he always comes around when I'm talking when I'm talking change. So we're having a really interesting week and hopefully uh, this podcast will help you figure out how to handle the energy and work with it in a productive way. Um, where would we go? All right, so we're gonna, first, the new moon that we had last week, still a couple days to do your rituals. This is a really powerful moon, as I pointed out last week. It was on Thursday, uh, but and today, uh, Sunday and Monday, Virgo moon uh, in a trine to Pluto. Excellent, excellent, excellent energies for getting things accomplished. We also have that lovely little Uranus North Node aspect, which happened to perfect today, um, Sunday, but as it's coming in, it's really a harbiner of change. And it says, I am bringing you some change. So excellent energy to work with it and say, okay, what's the change we want to bring? Sun and moon and Leo inspire you to go, yes, yes, this is for my greater good, my higher good, my bigger purpose. Mercury and Leo, I know exactly what I want, or maybe I know what I don't want, which then you write the positive version. Mercury notice is squaring the nodes of fate and squaring Uranus. So there's an aha there's an awakening. I have a lot of friends that are therapists or Jungians or people that work in mental health, talking to people, counseling people, changing them. And of course, astrologers and tarotists and stuff who also work helping people deal with changes. And this is, people are having breakthroughs. They're figuring things out. They're going, oh my God, I realize this is like that. And it, bah, 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 bah. So it's an excellent time for emotional and intellectual break outs, breakthroughs, break aparts, but it also is Uranus on the North Node once every 18 years. It's a big deal. Uranus is a very big planet. He promises us change. He is the revolutionary planet. He's the planet that says we have to change how we're doing this. This is not working anymore. And so you're going to hear a lot of Uranus, that has to change, that has to change. Or, you know, that never changes. And it's kind of like, well, everything changes. You just have to take the proper action to get it to change. So important with Mars and Uranus meeting up this week. And then Venus coming in, she's going to form a nice little sextile to them and kind of encourage them, comfort them, and invite them to think about, well, what is it they really want? Because this is how things happen when we have the the awakening, we have the consciousness of stuff. The minute we're conscious, the minute the problem is named, the minute it's identified, we know what to do with it. We don't necessarily know how, we just know, oh, wow, that's a problem. Or that, that happened, huh? And what is it we're gonna do about it? And so it's a very important week, not, not, not an easy week. It's a week of very profound changes changes that are going to seem fast, rapid, quick. If you've been pending in a situation, this can really accelerate it and make it launch and take off. Uh, it also can be um, very strong in terms of encouraging things to shift in a new way, encouraging things to manifest in a new form. Sudden unexpected changes, um, if you have a Uranus that you like, if you like change, I happen to like my Uranus, he's nice, he's next to he hangs out next to um, my Jupiter and they're both in my sixth house of work. So he usually brings work changes or pats or, you know, good stuff generally. Um, I usually like my Uranus transits, but there are people that hate them. They hate them. And if, you have, if you're one of those people that hates them, this, this week can be a little rocky for you. So we want to kind of work with it and understand the energy, understand what the universe is trying to do is break through our old structures. And in a way, you know, when you drop a plate, and it'll be a week when you drop things, you may fall off of something. You know, I have a friend who gets hit by bicyclists at cabs. You know, usually once every couple of years, she gets taken out by somebody on the street. I'm like, you need to be careful these next two weeks. I saw her for dinner a couple last week. Um, so it, it it's it's a planet of unexpected change, 
that brings change to you. Watch how many people are going to show up with broken something on the internet, right? Because it's Uranus breaks things. It doesn't have to, but it does. And it also, uh, it shifts our, shifts our energies very strongly. It really is, it's an awakening. And of course, it's on the north node of fate. So the good news is hopefully a positive change, a positive awakening. It is running, you know, as I talked about in my, um, uh, in my podcast last week, this is where the Uranus Mars is running through. It's running through the middle of the country and it's running through Russia and running down through there. So that's the path of this conjunction. Uh, it also is running through um, over Taiwan. Nancy Pelosi needs to be a little careful and probably not go to Taiwan because they, they said they're going to shoot her plane out of the sky. Uranus rules airplanes uh, and it rules children. And Niobe is very active in the sky. So watch for loss of children this week hopefully not bad but we know that that's an energy of how the chart's going to want to roll and you can see it running there through russia moscow and then running through the midwest of our country uh the middle parts of the country so we'll see what that how what that story portrays um so as we're looking at this new moon energy good days to do your ritual are today and tomorrow while the moon's in virgo uh, which is a good working moon forming a grand trine with the Mars Uranus and a grand trine with the Pluto, forming a trine with Mars and Uranus and a trine with Pluto, which is called the grand trine, which is let's get the changes going. And then there's a kite that forms with Neptune as the apex, like what's the dream I want to head in the direction of? So kind of think of your ritual as where am I heading my dream? What changes do I need to make in my life to get there? Very big energy of change change, 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 but not necessarily easy because Mars is coming in to max, hit the, hit Uranus, hit the node, and Mars is the planet of war. He also is in a sign he doesn't like a lot. He doesn't like being in Taurus because he gets mad as a bull and stubborn, right? That's one of the characteristics of Mars and Taurus. They can be really stubborn, but also there's an energy of um, solid, delivering, reliable, they're going to show up. So there's a physical component to this Mars Uranus. Uh, today on Sunday, Uranus meets up with the North Node. Again, a one, as I mentioned before, a once every 19 year cycle. The last time I talked, last week I talked a little bit about the, um, the compromise in 1855. It wasn't a compromise, the stolen election in the Nebraska, Kansas territory. But it, it, it's an energy of wanting to look at the structures that are in place and know that they need to change somehow. So this is when it, when structures change, when Uranus hits those nodes, when it says this can't sustain. So we can also, because it is Taurus, we can also see other government leaders stepping down. We saw Boris Yeltsin, we saw the changes in other countries, not Boris Yeltsin, Boris Johnson, um, going through Moscow, maybe something with Putin. Well, Mr. Putin leaving. Um, but it's an interesting energy because it really encourages us to think about what are the changes we need to make. Now, in our in our chart cast for the United States, it's in the sixth house. That's the military vets. I don't know if you saw John Stewart screaming and yelling in front of the Capitol because they didn't pass the health care bill for the vets because they were mad. You know, the Republicans voted for it and then nothing changed and then they voted against it. And he was out there as he put it, calling bullshit on this. So it's a very volatile energy, all right? And you're gonna watch, remember we try here to say volatile energy coming at ya, what are you gonna do with it, right? So caution, no, no risks, no climb into the edge of the ledge to take a picture, you know, none of that stuff. Um, be careful, be conscious, be aware that what you think is solid can break apart in a heartbeat with this energy. And it can be quick. It's very fast. Uranus is lightning fast. Uh, when Christopher Reeve fell off the horse, gone. Next broken, in a wheelchair the rest of his life. It's that energy. And of course, Taurus is the neck. Um, so we want to be conscious of our accidents around head and necks. Um, that's an important, uh, important aspect too. I had a while back, I had someone when I was um, still working in the in the corporate world and lovely man, we were talking and I knew astrology and I was 
you know, not yet a full astrologer, but I looked at his chart and I said, oh, well, what happened here? This is looking really interesting. And he looked at me and he got really sad. And he said, well, I, w I was supposed to be an opera singer. I'm like, well, you know, you have, you know, with your chart, you have a beautiful voice. And he goes, yeah, well, I went to a, I went to a chiropractor and he adjusted my neck and he took out my vocal cords. And I went, wow. And it was this kind of aspect. So be careful, be conscious, be aware that your voice, your words, your net energy, there's things that are going to be spoken because we also have Mercury shifting into Virgo where he's going to be very precise this week. But we, we do recognize with Uranus joining that north node and then right behind Uranus joining that north node, we have Mars joining the north node. And that, take play, that takes place on Monday. And he meets up with that north node, which he does every two years. And then right behind that, he meets up with Uranus, which he does every two years. But they don't meet up on the node of fate. That's the 19-year kick up because the nodes of fate direct us. They call us, they push us, they say, go, 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 go. And we're going to really see this energy that's very kind of unexpected, frankly, but not without um it's unexpected but not something you didn't think could happen if that makes sense it's not something that's so out there that you go wow i never thought that could happen it's out there and you went wow okay i've been getting a feeling and frankly the last couple of weeks you've been getting a feeling of it because as mars has been coming up towards uranus and Uranus has been getting towards the node, we've been feeling it. It's that restlessness, it's that volatility. You know, if you've been living with someone who's a little volatile emotionally, this is partly why, because the energy is very, very turbulent and it is trying to release something. Remember the North node is called the dragon's head. So the dragon head eats it. But then the dragon's tail, South node in Scorpio, we poop it out, right? Mars, the ruler of the south node of the poop, is up at the front on the north node. So we're bringing that forward. So astrology is very literal. There was an article about Harvey Weinstein in the news. The woman said he smelled like poop when he was assaulting her. And I'm like thinking, wow, that's got to be really, I mean, not that you want to be assaulted, but it was like a very literal interpretation. He smelled like poop. And uh, yeah, that's that Mars on the south node. And we, but it's coming to the north. It's wanting to bring the excrement of the past. And remember, that's how they track animals. They look for their poop. You know, I was, when I was on safari in Africa, we would go look at the poop. And, and I was kind of like, oh, I guess, you know, yeah, they poop like we do and you track by poop. So it's a tracking energy, but it's a breakthrough energy. It's an aha moment. So it's really understanding huge, huge changes this week. And these changes are going to reverb until the 13th of this month. And then we get Mars goes into Gemini. We figure out how to deal with them between now and the end of March, March 30th. Because whatever the changes are these next couple of weeks, it's going to take that next six months while Mars is in Gemini to get us stabilized in whatever our new structures are and to adapt to the changes that we've been presented with, offered, and encouraged to make. We also have right after Mars and Uranus meet up on the note of fate, we have lovely little Venus. Now, Venus is in Cancer and she's a happy girl. And so she's in a happy place and she is sextile. I mean, sorry, she's in mutual reception with the moon in Libra. So the moon in Libra wants to partner with you and encourage you and, and support you. And Venus comes to sextile the North Node, the Uranus and the Mars. So let's say, you know, they, they had a little fight and she goes in with the ice pack and says, here's the ice pack for your eye. I'm sorry you had the fight. And, and then she talks to Mars and Mars is like, yeah, you know, rah. but she's comforting. She's comforting. She's a cool, cool compress on a hard day. So that's going to happen as we get moving forward and kind of shifting into this new energy. We also have Juno and Neptune's midpoint on the thing that happened last April 12th. So April 12th, Jupiter and Neptune met up in Pisces. 
And they said to you, we're starting a new 13 year cycle. I did a, I did a webinar on it. You can download it. Uh, it's listed at the end of this presentation. Um, and they said, we're starting a new 13 year cycle. And now Juno's coming there and she's saying, okay, so let's partner with this. Can we get this moving? Can we get this off the ground? So a lot of the things you've been working on partnership energy, the last since middle of April actually start to unfold and Mercury goes past his opposition to Saturn. So he is getting permission. He's getting a yes now. He's getting a, okay, we can do it. Now he's also forming a quincunx to Pluto. So he's kind of like, mm, that's a lot of stuff I got to work on. So we're going to watch this Mercury quincunx Pluto that takes place this week that invites the change to come in but it also recognizes for the change to happen, we need to have the new plans, we have to have the new ideas. And fortunately, what happens this week is Mercury enters Virgo, and that happens on August 4th, and he'll be in Virgo until August 25th. So Mercury is in his favorite sign when he's in Virgo. All these changes have come in, have been illuminated to you, and you're like, okay, now I have to figure out what I want to do about it right because mercury's entering virgo and he is in his favorite sign but he also is a to mercury is he of the to-do list when he's in virgo so he has a to-do list he's checking it twice and he's really coming up with a list of things that will help you move forward he's talking to vesta about what you need to changes you need to make in your own environment but he also is in one of his favorite signs so when mercury's and he's you can see he's traveling away from the sun, right? He's, you know, the sun's in Leo, Mercury's moving along in Virgo. So he's zipping along and he's kind of like, okay, I'm, I'm in my new place and I'm kind of um, cleaning up. You know, Venus comes first, she rises before the sun. She says, the sun is coming, the sun is coming. And then the sun comes. Everybody goes, oh, the sun is here, the sun is here. And then Mercury comes behind and he says, okay, here's the details, here's the stuff. So, you know, I don't know if you watch America's Got Talent, but those, they get out there, those contestants get out there. They hit that golden buzzer, Sun and Leo. And then at the end, they always leave with a little box of the golden tags that landed on their head, right? Those golden, the golden shower comes down and then they have a little box of those little golden pieces of paper. That's Mercury and Virgo. So you're gonna gather up the gold and you're gonna make a little list and you're gonna keep that little golden box of papers that reminds you of what it was you said you wanted to do. So there's a lot of energy of moving forward, releasing old, and again, as I mentioned, I mean, many clients with therapists, many clients working with clients, clients are having breakthroughs and they're seeing things in ways they hadn't seen them before, and then they're shifting, they're shifting, they're changing. We also then have, at the end of the week, on next Sunday, we have Mars squaring Saturn. And so Mars squares Saturn that encourages us, the, the, the thing that's been holding us back releases, it's what we call an opening square. So Mars is like, okay, now I've, seen the changes I need to make. I have the vision, I have the plan. I'm past the limitations of Saturn and now I'm ready to roll. And there's a very strong energy once Mars gets past Saturn of taking action. Now, mind you, he's still in a cranky sign of Taurus, but he's moving forward and he is supported by Venus. You know, she was very kind to him. So he feels he's got an ally, even if he feels he's a bit alone in the story. And there's an energy this week of recognizing changes come, changes coming. What are we going to do with it? How are we going to use it? What does it look like? And what inspires us? And so there's a very strong, um, it's going to be a tough week on a lot of levels for a lot of people. But on, you know, I've got a lot of friends that are breaking body parts, right? You know, their leg, their hand, they're posting on the internet, here's my broken wrist, here's my broken leg, because Uranus breaks things. But when you break something, think about it, you sit down and you don't really get to run around the way you normally do. And in that quiet, that solitude, you have a moment of, oh, okay, I'm thinking about it in a different way because like I can't run around the way I used to. At the end of the week, when the Mars squares Saturn, the sun is on a world point. And so we have an aha moment 
and we have a moment where we really see things very, very clearly with that Mars square Saturn. And it's not quite a T square, it's a little wide, but it's pretty potent. And the sun over the over next week will square the nodes of fate, offering us a choice. And then what happens is the sun comes in to square Mars and Uranus, which is why next week will be a little difficult too. But you know, the whole point of this is consciousness, awareness. One of the reasons you study the heavens, you listen to astrology podcasts, is to understand where it's going to happen in your chart, what's going on, to give you a different framework, to have you go, oh, there's what she was talking about, or there's what he was talking about. And now I know how I want to work with it because I have my freedom of choice with my reaction to the energies. Can't make them go away, but I can use them for wisdom. I can use them for knowledge. I can make conscious choices about how I'm going to deploy them. And because Mercury is in a very feisty little mood right now, you may find out some stuff you really didn't like because he's in Leo. So he tells the truth um, even if you don't like it, right? And so that can be a little hard sometimes. But it's also when the problem is named or the truth is told, then you have an opportunity to work with it on a different level. And that's the key. It's like when you look at it and you go, wow, okay, that's the truth. Huh. Or that's your truth. Because remember, people, it's one of the reasons why we have a jury system. You get 12 people to agree it's the truth beyond a reasonable doubt. Okay. That looks like that's true to me. I, I agree that that's what happened. And, um, yeah, we go from there. So the idea of revealing something, seeing something, learning something very, very strong this week. Very potent. So now let's look at where it rolls through in your chart. So the sun this week is going from 7 Leo up to 15 Leo. So every planet in your chart that has the degrees between 7 and 15 is going to have some kind of aspect from the sun in Leo, which is his favorite sign. So the sun loves to tell you stuff. He has a lovely trine to Jupiter, uh, which he had right after the new moon. That happens on the 31st. And he says, ah, ah, I get it. I see it. I understand it. My passion is ignited. And then he has a, an aspect to the nodes of fate on August 3rd. He has what's called a parallel and contraparallel, where he kind of understands them. Next week, he squares the nodes of fate, but this week he's riding on the same degree of them. So it's kind of like an underlying rumble. You know how like, you know, I know something's coming. I can feel something's coming. I can feel it's coming. I don't know what it is. That anticipation energy, that's what the sun's doing this week with the nodes. He also has a pretty big health aspect on August 4th. No full, There's a lot of health aspects this week. So no fooling around with health matters. To the doctor, to the doctor, if stuff's up. Then he has a parallel to Uranus, which is, and a parallel to Mars, that's on August 4th and August 6th. So even though next week he aspects them, this week he under, he stirs the pot. And, you know, it's kind of like when you're figuring out something and you're trying to figure out how it works and you, you're, you're chewing on it, you're kind of gnawing it, you um, that energy, you know, it's the gnawing of the bone, so to speak. And uh, I will tell a story here. So I will ask if you have um, people that uh, are younger and, and Santa Claus is still a feature of their life, that you pause the recording right now. Uh, take a second to pause it and come back and listen later. Okay, pause the recording for the Santa Claus believers. When I was little, about six, I'm a little Virgo, we're figuring out things all the time. And I'm going in the car, we're driving around. I'm like, how does Santa Claus get to all these houses in one day? How does he do that? And my mother goes, we'll talk about it when we get home in her mother, her Leo voice. I'm like, all right, fine. We didn't talk about it when we got home. Get in the car the next time. I'm like, all right. So I'm really curious. How does Santa, you know, because I'm now being stimulated by driving by all these houses. How does he do that? I mean, how does he come in and lay all those presents under the tree? And then, and then. My mother's like, we'll talk about it when we get home. I'm like, all right. We get home, then we go up to my bedroom. She closes the door and she starts to yell at me. Just because you know that we're father and I or Santa Claus doesn't mean you have to ruin it for your brother and your sister. And I'm like, what? She goes, just, and I looked at her, I went, you're Santa Claus? <laughs> and I burst into tears, started sobbing hysterically. And my mother in one of those, uh-oh, <laughs> 
she was just trying to figure shit out. She wasn't trying to ruin it for her siblings. Um, goes, oh, oh, okay. And then she's like, well, we have to keep it a secret so your brother and sister don't find out. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh you know, <laughs> there's no Santa Claus. Oh, you know, so that's the energy of the week. Finding out there's no Santa Claus or finding out something you didn't really want to know on some level and, and then having to figure out what to do with it. And that's okay. Or a friend of yours finding out something they really didn't want to know because this is breakthrough energy. It's really seeing it. So be kind, be kind, be kind to folks that are um, that are in the process of figuring things out because when they figure it out, they have that aha moment and they go, okay, you know, what, what is that about? What is that about? Where, when is that, when is that shifting? So as we watch Mercury have that aha moment, which will probably be on the 1st and 2nd of August, he then has to figure out what to do about it. And then he goes into Virgo on August 4th, where he's going to be in Virgo until the 25th of April, uh, the 25th of August. So when he's in Virgo, he's, okay, I, I, I can do that. I can keep the secret from my brother and sister. Like, you and I are in on it, you know, wink, wink kind of thing. So there's an energy, once Mercury figures out what's actually going on, then he goes, okay, and he is in his rulership when he's in Virgo. So he's super strong, very powerful. So we're going to watch him over the next few weeks through August 24th, 25th, him really come up with, okay, dig, 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 put the clues together, put the puzzle together, figure it out. And then he has um, he has biquintiles to both Jupiter and Pluto on August 5th. So biquintiles are aha moments of harmony and unity. And it's kind of like when you're thinking about something and it goes, and it goes into place. Now, when I was younger, I was a programmer. So it would be like, all right, I'm trying to figure out how to do this interest calculation. And I have to do, 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 do. and you're doing the, and then that hits and you go, oh, comes into place. If you've watched the Beatles, if you haven't, you should. There's a Beatle thing that Peter Jackson, the guy that did um, Lord of the Rings and all those movies, he put the Beatle, the, the Let It Be tapes together. And you can see them putting together and building songs. And that, you know, it starts here and then it goes there and then it's a casual phrasing and then suddenly it's a song lyric. So it's that creative process that Mercury is now going to step into this week after he goes into Virgo on August 4th. Then we get to July, uh, we get to Venus. Venus is running from 16 Cancer to 25 Cancer. And as I mentioned, Uranus and Mars are having their fight and then Venus comes along to comfort them. So she's going to comfort the nodes, connect with the, she's going to hear about the fight on the 31st. She's going to go, uh-oh, sounds like there's a fight. And then she's going to come along to comfort on August 2nd by connecting with the nodes. Is there anything I can do here that might help? Then she has a sextile on August 2nd to Uranus, who's in the node of fate, who's really trying to figure out what to do. And remember, Uranus doesn't like being in Taurus that much either because he kind of has to blow the dirt up. He has to blow the earth up, right? He much prefers being a firework. You know, I'm going to illuminate you without having to have to blow the ground up. Um, but, you know, he's in the earth right now. So, so anyway, she comes to work with him and then she comes to work with Mars later that day and comfort Mars. So the two of them, are, she's kind of trying to get them to f connect, to feel better. And then she wants to partner with them on the 4th because she's going to be on a world point encouraging them to uh, partner in a new way or to come up with a different way of approaching things or perhaps they've broken up and now you have to make other plans that's also part of her energy we also have a um she has a quincunx to saturn on the fifth which is kind of hard news around structures shifting and changing and then she has a trine to neptune on the seventh which is kind of a magical space. It's got a magical component to it. So there's an energy here of, you know, how do we do this? You know, what do we do? What's the what's the purpose of this next chapter? So Venus, in, as she's in those last degrees of cancer, is comforting. And, you know, when she's 
when she's in a compassionate caring place she's going to care in the nature of the moon so when the moon's in virgo she's going to be very tending to the wounds when the moon's in libra she's going to be partnering and helping you figure out what to do when the moon's in scorpio she's going to be listening to you say mean things about other people which she'll be very cool with it's okay to say it you just don't get the gun out and then when she's in sag she's in a much more Okay, so what's our vision now that we know this? Where are we going? All right, Mars this week runs from 17 Taurus to um, 22 Taurus. Now, Mars, as we mentioned, is very busy this week. He meets up with the nodes of fate on the first. He meets up with Uranus on the first. He's been building the last couple of weeks. So as he comes to them, we really feel him activating a need to move forward a need to evolve a need to change and we will be changing this is uranus is a non-negotiable planet on multiple levels he says this is the change i'm bringing into your life this is what it's about this is where we're going with it and then he has a sextile to juno on the 5th of august and then he has a square to saturn um on August 7th. So he gets past the limitations, past the blockades, past the the shifts, and then he moves into a uh, new free-forming space. Now what's going to happen at the end of August, he's going to go into Gemini. So all the stuff that goes on this week, next week, through the 23rd, you're going to be figuring out how you want to actually handle it when we get to the end of the month through next March. So it's a longer, a longer story. Uranus this week runs from 1841 to 1848, not moving real fast. He's getting ready to station to go retrograde in the next couple of weeks. I think it's next week, actually. Um, so he's slowing down. But as we mentioned, he meets that note of fate once every 19 years. Last time he met it in Taurus was in 1855. It's, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Earthquakes, eruptions, volcanoes, break aparts, you know, stuff that you're kind of like, wow, that was kind of big, and it is. It's really big. We also have Vesta this week going from 441 of Pisces uh, to um, 317. She's moving backwards. We also have Juno going from 21 Pisces to 20, 50 Pisces. So the plants are all moving pretty slow. Saturn's at 22. Neptune's at 25, Pluto's at 27, going back to 26.55. Athena is in Gemini, and she's going between 12 and 16. Gemini, so she activates those planets. And Ceres uh, is between 3 and 6, 41 of Leo. So the energy of the heavens, really the feature of this week, is those out-of-bounds energies. And we still have Ceres out-of-bounds and Lilith out of bounds. So we're still going to be hearing stories of children and losses of children. We also have Niobe aspecting this week, Uranus and Mars. And Niobe is that Mars Uranus aspects Niobe. So that's like children. Um, there was an airplane crash. Uh, I don't remember when it was, but it was a while back. And it was a Mars Uranus aspect. And it was a bunch of kids that were being flown. A lot of the passengers on the plane were children that were being flown in. Um, out of uh, being flown into the United States to be adopted, I believe it was. And um, a lot of little babies on that airplane. And so the, I'll be curious to see what the loss of children energy is this week. Hopefully nothing too bad. Um, so today the moon is in Virgo. And it's in Virgo tomorrow, Monday the 1st. Uh, and it goes void at um, 629 Monday night. Uh, Monday is the DB day, the Donald Bland, actually Sunday and Monday are the Donald Blandford days. Then the moon goes void at 629, and then it goes into Libra uh, at 12.06 a.m. on Tuesday night. It's in Libra Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, goes void Thursday morning at 2.20 a.m. Tuesday is stressful, but it's not as tough as Monday. Uh, and Wednesday is stressful. It's it's a week of a lot of stress. There's like one, two, three, four, five Donald Blandford days, five DB days. So that's a lot. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. A lot of tension this week. 
And just remember, you know, when there's this much turbulence, it's always good to just take a beat and kind of pause and think about, well, what's what's your response going to be, rather than just charging in like a bull with Mars and Taurus. Now, obviously, you know, this Mars Uranus is also when we hear stories of people diving in and saving people, um, or you know, someone falls in the subway track and when they, so people jive, jump in and pull them out. You know, there is a lot of that. There's a lot of heroism with Mars Uranus too. I don't want to make it sound like it's all bad. But it is, um, it's it's definitely uh, straining. Then the moon goes void on Thursday at 2.20 and goes into Scorpio. So it's void all night, goes into Scorpio at 7.47 in the morning on the 4th. It, these are all East Coast times. And then it's in Scorpio Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Goes void at 7.24 uh, with a sextile to Pluto on Saturday morning. And it's void. Um, Saturday morning until 12.39 p.m. when the moon goes into Sagittarius on Saturday the 6th. It's And that's a night, the Scorpio moon has a nice closing aspect, as does the Virgo moon. Libra moon, the moon, the closing aspect, of course, is a square to Pluto. Not so easy. Relationship dynamics, not going well. So Saturday uh, afternoon and evening and Sunday, moon's in Sag, and then it goes void at 6.30 uh, in the morning on the 8th with a square to Neptune. And that's okay. That's kind of a, you know, this was my dream. Is it still my dream? Remember when I said, think about what you said you wanted to do in April? Well, now it's time. Now it's time to really start working on that. And of course, once Mars gets past his frustration with Saturn, which happens on Sunday afternoon, we're going to feel that Mars, you know, he had the fight with Uranus. Mm, 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 mm. And then he has to get past the blockade to Saturn. So he does not get back past that until four o'clock on Sunday. So there's a mm, 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 energy with Mars where he's, you know, and if you've ever watched a bullfight, um, they, you know, they, they stomp around. You know? <laughs> They're not happy. And so this is the energy of the bullfight, right? And uh, it's it's a hard week. It's a hard week on it. Um, but, you know, nobody said life would be easy. I remember back in the 80s, I think it was, I read this book by M. Scott Peck, and the opening was The Road Less Traveled. And the opening sentence was, life is difficult. And I was like, yeah, life, life can be difficult. But, but it also has a lot of love. It has a lot of joy. It has a lot of recognition of what's really, really important. And so the energy is kind of supercharged here in terms of inviting us with the sun in Leo and Ceres in Leo to focus on what we love because that's the space. That's the space we can go to. That's the space that's really happy and healthy and, and heart filled for us. So I'm kind of like, enjoy it. It's your, your, we live in a beautiful planet. We have family and friends who we love. We have people that adore us. And we have people that we don't always get along with, but they taught us stuff. We learned from them. You know, it's very helpful on weeks like this to focus on what you're grateful for and to make a gratitude listing every morning. You know, I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for my little Remo hanging out here. Yeah. Um, you know, what are you grateful for? What are you happy about? What brings your life joy and peace? And then you remember that for when the hard times happen. And I wish you a good week. And I'll see you next week. Bye.